Valentine's Day is upon us. If you are the planner in the relationship and you don't have anything planned yet, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to be taking you to several different neighborhoods around Seattle for the next 10 dates. Now if you don't live in Seattle, that's okay. You might be able to find something similar wherever you are. First we travel to Ballard, a hip waterfront neighborhood with Scandinavian roots. Known for its trendy restaurants and the Ballard Locks where the ships and salmon flow in. Make a reservation at the Anecdotes Pottery Studio where you and your special someone can get artsy by painting something practical like a coffee mug or a serving platter. Reservations can be made online. It's $10 per person plus whatever pottery you select. Give yourself at least two hours to paint, if not more, and then walk over to the nearby Mediterranean restaurant Stoneburner. Now I would like to introduce you to someone who knows all about menus and what to order. You can call her WWCE, what would Cozy Cannoli eat? Hello, I'm your guide to WWCE, what would Cozy Cannoli eat? Now usually for dinner, I prefer to keep it light for the sake of my waistline, but since we're talking about your waistline, well, in that case, I would like the olives, garlic bread, the grilled octopus, tortellini, fresh mozzarella pizza, the keen oyster mushrooms, the winter chicories, uh, the shaved espresso sprouts. Oh, and I'll also have the Selena Cooler cocktail. Well, thank you for those lovely recommendations. Now, I have one more tip for you. Download the Chinook app on your phone. It's a $15 uh, membership per year, but you save a lot of money if you use the multiple coupons they offer. For example, at Stoneburner, they have a 25 off $75 deal. For our second date, we're going to head to the artsy and quirky neighborhood of Fremont, known for the Fremont Troll. Though this time, ignore the troll, we're going to get brunch at Rock Creek Restaurant. Hey, do you have any brunch recommendations? I love brunch. It is the first meal of the day, so I feel inclined to try everything. And also, I don't feel guilty about eating too much because I can just walk it off. Waiter, I would like to order six oysters the shrimp and grits, the beignet for dessert. Ooh, and do you have mimosas? After a delicious brunch at Rock Creek, walk a few blocks up north to the Woodland Zoo to check out the cute penguins and red pandas. Tickets will be around $30 for two people. The zoo also hosts a lot of holiday events as well as concerts during the summer. If it's raining and you don't feel like walking around the zoo, switch to the Theo Chocolate Factory. I want to get chocolate wasted. A tour of the chocolate factory is $12 per person and it's also in Fremont. Instead of having brunch at the Rock Creek, you can switch to the southern Italian restaurant Agrodoce, which is a little closer to the Theo factory. If I was hungry, I would get the lamb burger with the spicy mustard and fried egg. That looks delicious. But I have a chocolate tour afterwards, so I really don't want to slip into a food coma. Uh, let's go with the egg white scramble with the foraged mushrooms. For the fourth date, I am taking you to Belltown for my type of dinner and movie. For dinner, we're going to have a four course meal inside a Moroccan tent in a restaurant called Marrakesh. It's $21.95 per person and it includes lentil soup, salad, Bastilla Royale, which is sort of like a croissant stuffed with meat uh, covered in powdered sugar. I think it's the most exotic dish on the menu. Then you pick a main entree of your choice. I recommend the chicken or the lamb in the honey sauce. There's also a simple dessert and mint tea. Call a restaurant to make reservations and ask for the belly dancing schedule. Now after your dinner, Head to the 21 Plus Big Picture Theater for pre-movie cocktails. If you don't have time to get a cocktail before a movie, you can also order a cocktail to have it delivered to your seat. Yep, it's that kind of theater. 
The next day is going to be great for couples on a budget. We're heading south to the edge of downtown to Nijo's Sushi and Bar. Make a reservation for their happy hour, which is from Monday to Friday. It's from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. After happy hour, take a walk to the waterfront and maybe a ride on the Great Seattle Wheel during sunset. Wow, this menu is amazing. This must be like the best happy hour in Seattle. Let's get the Kelby ribs, agadashi tofu, um, the yam fries, takoyaki, kaki fried, salmon kama, sashimi combo, edamame, spider roll, ooh, the fried green tea ice cream, and let's see, for the cocktail, I'll get the emperor's cocktail and a sparkling yuzu jelly shot. Why not? I think I'm good for now. The next downtown day is going to be a bit of a splurge. It's going to take place at the 6-7 restaurant inside the historic Edgewater Hotel. Give us a bottle of your finest champagne, five shrimp cocktails, and some bread for my brother. Call ahead to make a reservation at the 6-7 restaurant and make sure to ask for one of the tables located by the window near the water. After brunch, Take a walk along the waterfront to the Olympic Sculpture Park. Are you getting tired of your bedroom? Maybe it's time for a staycation. I recommend the Silver Cloud Inn on South Lake Union. Make sure to book a room with the jacuzzi tub and a fireplace. For dinner, you can cross the street to I Love Sushi, a sushi restaurant right on Lake Union. I recommend the calamari salad and the nine piece amakase. The next morning, your room should also include a free breakfast. The eighth date is for busy professionals who have too much stress in their lives. Consider getting a couple's massage at Spa Via Green Lake. Do try to book early. This is a very popular spa. If they are all booked out, I've included a couple alternatives down below in the description. Oof, I am taking you everywhere. For the next date, we are heading to Stylish Queen Anne for a cooking class at Eat Loco. The good news about Eat Loco is they currently have coupons available. This is a small group cooking class which makes it perfect for couples. After the cooking class, if you're hungry, you can walk a couple blocks to Koku Market. It's a terrific place for afternoon tea, coffee, and snacks. Koku was formerly known as the Cedarburg Tea House, owned by a South African couple. Because it was such a popular spot with unique South African treats like the Mova pudding, the previous owners actually taught the new owners their secret recipes. So now at Koku, you can get both South African and Japanese treats. If I was hungry, I would get the brewed pork rice bowl or the forager sandwich. It is so interesting that you braise your pork in tea. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But today I'm just here for your amazing warm mova pudding and a red cappuccino. Thank God you learned the recipe for the mova pudding. Like I don't I don't know what I would do with myself if that was gone forever. I mean I guess I could fly to South Africa. For the final 10th date, we're going to do something a little bit more laid back in the family-friendly neighborhood of Wallingford. Meowtropolitan is the first cat cafe in Seattle and on Saturdays they host cat yoga. Yes, it is exactly what you think it is. It's yoga with the cats. It's $20 a person and it also includes tea. After you have reached Namaste, you can walk over and get brunch at Tilth. Do make reservations ahead of time. It's a very popular spot on the weekend. Can't seem to get enough food today since I'm here at another restaurant. Well, in this case, I'll have the sourdough French toast, the vegetable hash with the pork belly, please, and the Tuscan kale salad. Thank you. That's all, guys. Those are my 10 date night ideas for Seattle. I have plenty more, but that is going to take another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to click the subscribe button below to follow Cozy Cannoli.